yes you're reading that title right guys i just cashed two back-to-back 38 -back x's you can see this one was from last night we got a stack on the milwaukee brewers here we had alvarez on the under hits runs rbi solar on the under runs Marte on the under total bases which is funny because when you're going to see this sunday pick I actually had zach gallon on the over pitching outs so arizona just helped me and the discord cash two 38 x's in the past two days this flip was from sunday i showed you guys in last night's video and this flip was just from last night and that gives us plus 63.8 units in the past two days april was a bit of a slow start you could see we were down actually 36 units but now with these 238 x's on a back-to-back -back, we're still up 28 units for april and it's only been two weeks once this month ends i would not be surprised if we're up over 50 units so for anyone who joined yesterday like i said in last night's video you guys just paid your monthly fee four times over with one single day so congrats to everyone who joined last night and the best part about all of this, it's not just the Discord cooking. On the free pick videos, we are on a crazy run here. 28 and 9 in the past few videos here. And you can see this was the slip I gave out Sunday night. It ended up cashing after all because we had two CS2 picks that played Monday. So Hugh Darvish was the only pick that sold us from getting that juicy 25x. But 5 and 1 day there. I saw a comment that said he cashed 250 off the picks recently. So I'm happy for everyone that's been getting in on these free picks. Now last night we had a DNP on blaze alexander we cashed the cs2 once again on this stack and and then our stack on arizona for Guriel and walker did not hit but kyle harrison easily cashes over 16 and a half pitching outs so three and two there overall 28 and nine in the past few days now it's a beautiful day because the nba plans are starting here and i have a very juicy slip here it's actually been only four nba picks and then two MLB picks because just because it's NBA planes doesn't mean you have to put every single pick for NBA. I, I did find some very nice value in the MLB, so we're definitely going to be taking advantage of it. And before I get into the picks, I do want to say you guys have been absolutely crushing it with the support in the recent videos. I think I've gained about 100 subs in the past week. So to celebrate that 3,000 sub milestone, I will be doing a giveaway in this video to celebrate the start of the planes as well as the back to back 38Xs. Let's celebrate with a giveaway for the premium Discord. So it's going to be for the price picks and underdog plays for new users only, guys. If you're already in the Discord, I'm not going to be giving you away free spots. It's for new people who have never tried the Discord before. All I have to do is comment who you think is going to win between the Lakers and the Pelicans, as well as Golden State versus the Kings. I personally put down money on both of the favorites here, Golden State and the Pelicans. You could see my stake slips right here. Put 137 on Golden State and 109 on the Pelicans. So let's see what's going to happen tonight. Leave your comments down below and I'll draw the winners in tomorrow's video. Start off, we're going to go to Golden State and grab two players. We're not going with Curry. We're not going with Draymond. We're not even going with Clay. We're actually going with Wiggins on his over one and a half three points made. There's kind of two options I like on Wiggins. Either his one and a half three points made, which I'm going with, or his over 16 and a half points plus assists. I'm personally going to go with his one and a half three points made. And I'll get into that a little bit right after I show you the second pick, which is going to be on Kaminga on his over 23 and a half final score. I think this line is a bit disrespectful. I think it's too low. Yes, he dropped zero points last game, but even with zero points, he got 19 and a half fantasy score, which is kind of crazy. So I think this line is a bit too disrespectful. Projections have him coming off the bench. You can see that he's actually not expected in the starting lineup. They have Curry, Clay, Wiggins, Green, and Jackson Davis. So Kaminga is not expected in the starting lineup. So if he's surprisingly in that expected lineup, it only helps us. But even if he comes off the bench, I don't care. He's still going to cash this over 23 and a half fantasy score. Because let's take a look at the breakdown here. On Rotowire, they have this fantasy optimizer that tells you the predictions on the fantasy score. And essentially, this is FanDuel fantasy score but it's calculated the exact same way as price picks they have him projected all the way at 29 fantasy points remember guys we're getting him at 23 and a half they're also projecting 29 minutes which is kind of where i haven't projected i think he's gonna play at least 30 minutes tonight even if he comes off the bench if he starts i could see him getting even more so let's go take a look at kaminga's recent games and you, and you can actually see how much fantasy score he got per game it's nba points right here he only got 19 and a half as you saw on price picks he started this game with 23 minutes and zero points as i said yet he still got pretty close to that 23 and a half in this game versus portland only a 100 point game 26.7 so we cleared his line here with 34 minutes 19 6 and 1 and you can see this other game where he came off the bench 27 minutes 40 fantasy points and then all these other games except this game versus knicks where he only played 26 minutes he got 19.7 all these other ones cashed so yes he's coming off a terrible game and he has the potential of not starting but i'm telling you if this guy gets announced in the starting lineup this fantasy score is going to get bumped I already think it's too low, so I could see it getting bumped throughout the day. But especially if he's in that starting lineup, he will definitely get bumped. So we're getting great value here at 23 and a half fantasy score. Now for Wiggins, the only two props that I saw juice towards the overs were his one and a half three points made. I'll show you right here on Bet365. You can see the juice towards the over all the way up at minus 125. And his points plus assists. Nothing else, not his points rebounds. Specifically, his points plus assists here at minus 120. Obviously, his PRA is good too, but he set at 22 on price picks. If he was at 21 and a half, 
I would have taken that. But since the threes has the most juice here all the way up at minus 125, I think it's the best play. And I was looking into it a bit deeper and I do think it's actually a great pick. So let's go take a look at Andrew Wiggins' recent game logs. He has been playing pretty well here. 19 points, 18, 15, 17. This was a bit of an off game versus Houston, off game versus San Antonio. But all these recent games, he has been scoring quite a bit of points. He has been chucking up a lot of threes. You can see five here, four here, eight here, five here, five here, five here. And this was the only game that he got to. So in the past like seven games, he's been absolutely chucking and chucking threes. We can actually see how he's been doing since the All-Star break. So post All-Star break here, 14.7 points on average compared to the pre-All-Star break where he was only averaging 12.5. And this is what's more important here is just three points made. 1.7 post All-Star break. Pre-All-Star break, he was only hitting 1.1 threes per game. So he's been shooting more threes and making more threes because you can see his three-point percentage is also higher here, all the way up at 38.4%. And you can see after these two DNPs, he has cleared this in the past four games, except for the Pelicans. But the Pelicans are one of the best teams at defending the three ball. If we scroll down to 2023, they allow their opponents to shoot at about a 35% three point percentage compared to Sacramento, who has the worst defense against the three pointers along about a 39% three point percentage. So you see how this one and a half threes is starting to all come together to make a lot of sense. And it's not even done there because we could go ahead and take a look at Sacramento's points allowed. So are they an easy or tough matchup? And you can see they're right around the middle of the table in points allowed. But when you actually go to the two positions that we're going for here, small forward and power forward for Wiggins and Kaminga, these are the two positions that they allow the most points to and they become easier matchups here. So 22.11, you could see them in the green in about the top 10 easiest matchups for the small forwards and the power forwards even easier. They're the top four for points allowed at 25.14. And if I go to any other position, you will not see Sacramento versus shooting guards versus centers versus point guards. They are not in this top 10 list. So we are literally tackling the two best positions versus a specific team. So Wiggins 3 and Kaminga fantasy score are the two best possible picks right now on this Golden State team. So that is the first two picks. Now the next two picks, we're going to have to get them from the Lakers. And the first one has to be LeBron James, the man on the thumbnail, the man himself on his over nine and a half assists. Now, this is an interesting line because his regular line is set at nine assists. I would have liked to take it at eight and a half assists, but a nine price picks is basically telling you, you might as well grab that nine and a half assists. And they kind of baited me into it because you're going to see at the end of the slip, we're getting a 38x payout compared to if I were to just grab his nine assists, I would be getting a 25x payout. So I might as well grab his over nine and a half assists to get that juice juice payout. And of course, everyone saw that he cleared 17 assists versus the Pelicans, and he has been doing pretty well here, averaging 10.8 in the last five. So I'm guessing that's why everyone is on his over nine and a half. And also because he's a super popular player. Because he's 70,000 people are actually on this prop right now. And I'm liking it. I honestly don't like using the popular picks too often. Because think about it. If 99% of sports bettors are losing. And you're taking popular picks that everyone is on. You're literally just following losers, right? So it makes absolutely no sense to just tail popular picks all the time. Price Picks puts this here for a reason. That being said, there could be some good popular picks. Not every popular pick is going to be garbage. Like this one right here. LeBron James over 9 assists is actually a good one. Now because I'm taking LeBron assists. I want to be pairing him up with someone who scores points, ideally a lot of points from assists. And we could go at Anthony Davis here. It's right here. This taco on the over 20 and a half points is definitely the play. But because you guys maybe use the taco already, I'm going to go with just a regular pick or maybe you're limited on taco props. I'm going to show you guys an alternative. But if you see this in time in the next two and a half hours, definitely go with AD on his over 20 and a half points. It's a four point discount. It's an absolute no brainer to take, especially when you're pairing it with LeBron on his assists. What I'm actually going to go with is D'Lo on his over 16 and a half points. So let's take a look at Delo's line on these sports books because that is where I'm seeing the most value. If we go ahead and throw him on Bet365, he's set at 17 and a half points. Remember, on price picks, we're getting him at 16 and a half points. That's a full point differential. Every point counts. Go check how many times you guys lost by half a point or a full point. It happens quite, quite often. So we know we're getting value there. And if we go and check Delo here, you could see he's set at 16 and a half on Pinnacle but heavy juice towards the over 16 and a half. You can see if I want to make $100 in profit, I have to bet $133 on his over. If I want to make $100 profit on his under, I only have to bet $100, which means it's more expensive to play his over 16 and a half points because it's more likely to happen. So they're saying you could take his over 16 and a half points, but you're going to have to pay us a bit more to get the same reward as taking his under because the over is much more likely than the under. So we know we're getting an absolute beauty of a line on D'Lo and we're pairing this up with an assister on the Lakers if you go and check and if we go and check D'Lo's field goals assisted made you see it's about 54 and a half percent are going to be assisted as well as his threes all the way at 73 and a half percent 
So he's scoring a lot of assist points. It's not as much as a center like someone like Nurkic where basically all his points are going to be assisted, but it's a good chunk of them. Now, the only problem I see with D'Lo is when he does have good games, like 20, 25 point games, it's most likely because he's going to be relying on that three ball. You can see about 50% of his points come from that three ball. So I know I just went over the fact that the Pelicans are one of the toughest matchups versus that three ball, but he did just play versus the Pelicans. And you can see here, the Lakers scored 124 points and he got 19 of those points with with five three points made on 10 three points attempted. So he actually shot with a 50% split on this game and he clocked in 19 points with 38 minutes. And again, he, I'm expecting him to get a ton of minutes. Look at these recent games here, 38, 35, 37, 39. And this is the most important game of the season. So he's definitely gonna clock in at least 38 minutes. On top of that, if we actually do see LeBron James clearing this assist line, he's probably doing less scoring if he's getting 10 plus assists, which means D'Lo is definitely going to be piggybacking off a lot of LeBron assists. Maybe even if three or four assists go to D'Lo, that's an extra eight to 12 points for D'Lo. So you could see how these guys are very related to each other. So that's going to be the first four picks and they're all overs as you could see. But when you have games that look like this, if you go over to NBA, we could see these spreads on both these games, minus one and a half towards the Pelicans and minus two towards the Golden State Warriors. These tight spreads and tough matchups just make it even more likely that maybe one of these games goes to OT. And obviously OT is only going to help us when we're grabbing overs in these specific cases. But on top of that, it's a play in game. There's not going to be blowouts or anything. Everyone is going to be getting their full, full minutes. So you want to be taking advantage of overs in these specific cases. So that's that for NBA. And now we're going to go over to MLB. Very simple. I'm not going to get too deep into it because NBA is what we're here for. We're going to go with Jose Quintana on his under five and a half pitcher strikeouts. This is a beautiful prop. Let me show you the value on every single sports book just to show you the juice on this. So on Bet365 is under five and a half strikeouts is juice to minus 130. Like I showed you on the previous example with D'Lo, if I want to make $100 of profit, I have to bet 130 on this. If I want to make $100 on his over, I have to only bet $100. So that's when you know the under five and a half is the better prop. And it's not just one sports book saying that. If we go over to DraftKings, you could see his under is juice all the way at minus 135. And let's top it off with one more sports book pinnacle here was I'm at minus 150. So this is heavy, heavy juice. Honestly, I'm not sure why this prop is still on price picks. It should definitely be bumped to five strikeouts. I'm not sure why they still have it at five and a half. But I'm assuming it will get bumped by the time you guys are watching this video if you're watching it later. So I'll already give you a replacement pick because I know it's a very high probability it gets bumped. Just go with it's under 16 and a half pitching outs. It's not nearly as good as his strikeouts. But because of this next pick we're taking, it's all going to make sense even if you have his under pitching outs. So let's go for strikeouts for now. Hopefully the guys who are watching this a bit early could get this prop in under five and a half pitcher strikeouts. Now, because we're taking the Mets pitcher on his under strikeouts, we're going to be taking someone on the Pirates that's going to take advantage of the fact that Quintana is not striking people out. So what makes sense is to take some sort of runs prop on the Pirates, hits runs RBIs, or just total bases in general. And the player I'm going for here is Brian Reynolds on his over one and a half hits runs RBIs. So Reynolds is number two in the batting order. So we're hoping for some quick runs within the first inning. Let's say in the first inning, all these guys are getting their hits, runs, RBIs, and they're scoring like two, three runs within the first inning. Then it becomes even more likely that Quintana gets subbed out. So not only is he not getting strikeouts because everyone is hitting the ball or they're getting walked, but because he's not getting strikeouts and allowing runs runs in he's gonna be subbed off even quicker which which means he's gonna have even less outs to even have the opportunity to get more strikeouts so it's very correlated in the sense that if the pirates are getting hits runs rbis and quintana is not getting strikeouts because the other team is hitting and if the other team is hitting it means quintana is probably allowing a lot of runs in allowing him to get subbed off quicker now obviously it's only one player we got here but we got someone in the start of the batting lineup so he's gonna get at least two at bats within the first five innings Meaning if he's clearing this line within the first five, it's very likely that Quintana is not pitching well and he's going to go under his five and a half strikeouts. So this is the full beautiful slip for the start of the NBA playoffs. Andrew Wiggins, Kaminga, LeBron James, Russell, like I said, you could replace with Davis. And then two MLB props, very correlated here, Quintana and Brian Reynolds. Good luck, everyone.